Coming your way on Spot TV. Figaro. Slap on a bib and head to the east side. Lebanon, Illinois is stepping into the food challenge ring with a 16-pound beast of a pizza. Now that's the big mama. Find out how you can have the challenge named after you. Pop quiz for you, St. Louis. What restaurant has 900 butterflies, a top chef, and a skybox in the kitchen? Come with me to Maplewood and there's a tasty answer. Ever have a hard time finding a great place to throw a party? We've uncovered a throwback speakeasy that could be one of the most unique places in town. Dr. Chevegas has been one of the most sought after live bands in the Midwest since the mid 90s. And their frontman, Frankie Muriel, is a big reason why. We've got the exclusive interview to talk tough questions. So you have a flat iron? Oh yeah, you know, you go. It takes forever, but you do it. Welcome to Spot TV, Tim Tialdo alongside Shauna Hilt down here overlooking the Arch Riverfront. And let me tell you, I'm really impressed by this view, Tim. This Amazing, is awesome. And if you're here just visiting in St. Louis, I'd encourage you to check out ExploreStLouis.com. They have a great calendar of events that'll clue you in on what's happening here in sound. And if you want to see St. Louis in a whole different way, go to our website, SpotTVSTL.com. We've got high definition videos of some of the most unique places in town. Now, as you can see, it's beautiful. Spring is upon right. us. Yes, so that means the <laughs> motorcycle enthusiasts are ready to get out but you can't because it's raining. So we've got a new place for you indoors. And let me tell you, it's awesome. Three businesses under one roof, and it's one of the hottest motorcycle destinations in St. Louis. <laughs> we're all motorcycle junkies. We're, we're pure motorcycle sports guys from motocross, road racing, drag racing, the whole gambit. If you take a look around, I mean, we have a, a pretty upscale retail shot. We have, as you see behind me, Triumph and Ducati. These are the best, the absolute best. They're commonly referred to as the Ferrari of motorcycles. With the Ducati, we have a Monster 696. It's well under $10,000. Uh, the average person that was interested in a new motorcycle could afford a Ducati Monster with little or no, no trouble. Uh, it's a very sexy brand. It's a very artistic brand. I think the Italians, they design something beautiful first, and then they figure out how to make it and sell it second. With Triumph, we do have a cruiser line, so Triumph has cruisers as well, which would be more uh, akin to what Harley-Davidson offers. They're, they're pretty much purely a, a cruiser-style motorcycle. The Triumph is the, the longest-running motorcycle manufacturer uh, there is. It's the oldest to beat Harley by a year, I believe. We also have KTM dirt bikes. And KTM is a, is a huge brand in off-road racing. They have a lot of championships and hair scrambles and woods-type racing. Not only do you come in and see the products, but we also tell you the history of the brand. So we have a few images up there, lots of text, read it left to right like a book, and it tells you all about sort of how the manufacturers came about. The Triumph Grill. It, it is a motorcycle themed uh, restaurant. But it's very tastefully motorcycle themed. I think when we take a look in there, you'll notice uh, the different architectural value of the, of the space. There's uh, old motorcycle hubs hanging from the ceiling at different levels with spokes sticking out. Uh, the sconce lighting is motorcycle headlights with matching shocks to, to hold them up. Just a very, very unique restaurant with a fantastic menu. We wanted it to be motorcycle themed and Triumph is not trademarked as a word. So we actually did contact Triumph North America initially several years ago and, and did ask their permission and they were absolutely you know open armed do it and you know two and a half years later here we are with the Triumph dealership attached so it, it really worked out for the best. This museum is sort of the vision and passion of, of Steve Smith. He developed the, the Moto Museum. It's just a very very unique museum. Uh, we have, again, around 100 motorcycles over there, most of them pre-war. Uh, a, a really avid motorcyclist won't have heard of, of many of these bikes over there. We have a, a three-seat Bomerland, for example. It was made in Czechoslovakia uh, back around 1930. Very interesting bike. It's red and yellow. It looks like a cross between a McDonald's ad and a fire truck. As you tour through the museum, you'll see most bikes have a little plaque with them, and on the plaque is a story 
that tells a little bit about the bike, possibly about its uniqueness, and, and generally where it came from, how we came about it. About 70% of the motorcycles came from uh, Europe or Australia, and the other 30% came from here in the States. And we have a, a big space over there, a big gallery as we call it, and that's been very popular to, to lease out for special events, whether it be wedding receptions or sales meetings, charity events. Uh, we've actually had two weddings here now where the wedding and the reception took place uh, on site here. During the week, Monday through Friday, uh, the museum is open from 10 to 4 as long as there's no uh, event going on and there's no admission. This is a very, very unique uh, event space and a very cool motorcycle museum. Our industry knowledge is second to none, I would say, at least in, the, in this market, and we just, we just have a lot of fun here. Uh, we refer to it as Disneyland. So go to SpotTVSTL.com and make a comment on this video and you could win some Ducati apparel courtesy of Moto Europa. That way you can look styling in one of these while you're riding one of these. <laughs>in the city are you going to find a place quite like in our next destination in Maplewood. Take a little bit of the east coast and the west coast, mix in and blend some of that midwest and you got a perfect recipe for the Monarch restaurant. Monarch restaurant is a dining experience. When we created the restaurant we wanted it to have a look and feel of cool and chic and hip but at the same time we wanted it to be inviting and comfortable. You can come in for a drink at the bar and have a well-made cocktail by our mixologist. You can sit there and, and watch a sporting event or listen to great music. And then you can either have a casual dining experience in our bistro or go for a more upscale dining experience in our dining room. That's always our showpiece. That's the wow factor. The butterflies, there is 895 of them up there. We also wanted to have Al fresco dining, so you have the bistro where the windows open up, so you can have street side dining here in Maplewood as well. We have our sky box that seats up to 10 people, which is located in the kitchen, and that is one of the most unique dining rooms in St. Louis. It's encased in glass and lofted above the uh, kitchen, and the chef does a special tasting menu for you up there. That's about the most fun place to have dinner. We have a 3,000 bottle cellar with about 500 different selections of wine, about 20 wines by the glass, and then we have a wine room that you actually walk through the wine cellar, have dinner in the wine room, as opposed to eating in a cold cellar. Uh, chef Josh Galliano is one of few chefs in St. Louis on a level of na nationwide, international chefs. He lives and breathes cooking. He wants to make sure that every guest comes in here, gets an experience, and learns something about him and his cooking. Every aspect of our bar is well thought out. It's very impressive of how they work. They take time to make every single cocktail as a chef makes food in the kitchen. We, we actually even had to buy an ice machine for our mixologist that makes cold draft solid ice cubes. That's how deep we go to making sure that everything is done to perfection here and you can truly create an experience. I'm Aaron Teitelbaum with Monarch Restaurant and you're watching Spot TV. So Paul and I have encountered this social dilemma that a lot of you probably run into. Where do I throw that next great party that people are going to be talking about the next day? Or that wedding rehearsal dinner that will really turn heads. But we're downtown and we've literally found a back alley secret off of Olive. It kind of has that Art Deco 20s feel. And that secret loungy feel too. But there's one problem. you got to have a password. And you got to answer to this guy. Well, the whole building's four stories. We occupy two and a half stories. People are very blown away by it. They don't know what to expect. They don't know where they're supposed to go. So the lower level, speakeasy, the main level, and then the mezzanine level, which overlooks the first floor, is a little lounge. We're not like any other place in town. It's very unique with the Art Deco, pinup girls on the walls, all the murals in the space, and it being 
historically brought back to what it was like in 1928. We do a lot of weddings during the year, probably 45 to 50 weddings. They're all very unique for the couple, which makes it kind of fun. We do some charitable events, also a lot of birthday parties. People love doing birthday parties in here and theme parties. And then coupling that with a speakeasy in the basement, people enjoy what the space has to offer. The downstairs is what's what we refer to as the speakeasy. The definition of a speakeasy is an illicit bar that sells alcohol. We are a little bit elusive. Uh, we have a, a very specific way that people can find out about us, and that is to check our website. By checking the website, they can also find our password, which will allow you to come in with a lower entry fee. It also will inform you when you check for the password if we're actually open before you come down. We serve moonshine. We often get the question, well, isn't that illegal? And it, yes, when alcohol was illegal, it was illegal for us to serve moonshine. But we're in the clear. By far, the cherry moonshine seems to be what everybody likes the most, so that's what we serve. And then we also have a bathtub gin that we make in-house. It's a gin infused with lemons and limes. We actually don't make it in the bathtub, but, <laughs> but people don't know that and they don't seem to care one way or the other. It's a very well-kept secret, very diverse, eclectic crowd, and always a unique experience. So. As you walk through downtown St. Louis, you'll see some beautiful historical buildings that begs the question, what's on the inside? We had the opportunity to meet an artist and designer who did some amazing things to this five-story building, a building that he calls the Cosmopolitan. This building was, was built for National Cash Register back in 1928. Uh, this being an American Gothic building, we went with a Gothic look to it. It's funny, these buildings are really uh, unlike a lot of architecture in that they're they're very narrow and they're long. So you've, you've really got to get creative and put in different levels to make them look right. I bought an antique billiard table and an antique pocket billiard table. So I decided to put those in the basement where we could just get away from everything. What I had planned to do with that first floor was a subliminal feeling. I bought that bar from an antique shop in Chicago and I retrofitted it. We had to build the front bar, but it worked out very, very nice because it's got an old world look about it. I studied the ceilings of uh, uh, French artists, but we devised our own and we wanted to make it look as though you were looking through sky. It cost me a fortune, but, it, but I think it really turned out nice. I'm a nut on using stone, and I'm a nut on using wood. They never go out of style. And then I thought, well, this is so pretty, I'm gonna go ahead and do this floor in the kitchen. And it turned out, I think, extremely nice. We've got a big screen TV down here, we've got a TV in the kitchen, and then we've also got a TV up on the upper area. It's basically an elevated area for if we have a few people that are gonna stay here. About two days out of the week we, spend, we, we stay here. My wife and I really enjoy, this is, a, this is like a getaway for us. It's a very cozy. It just really, um, really makes you feel good. So how many times do you go out to a dinner, maybe a movie or a bar and go, yeah, this is great, but I just want some entertainment sometimes that kicks. Well, I'm right there with you. And we've got some entertainment that kicks down here in South St. Louis at the American Sports Mall. It's basically a bunch of women beating the tar out of each other. Get ready for roller derby. It's a full contact sport played by women on uh, roller skates. A lot of craziness and a lot of fun. Um, anywhere from the age of 18 to like people in their 40s who play roller derby. There's strategy to what, everything that we're doing. It, it, I mean, a lot of people automatically think, oh, it's girls on skates beating each other up. So I guess in a general sense, kind of. But there's actually a lot of strategy to the sport. Um, there's one jammer per team on the track at a time. All of the blockers for each team has you know, strategies for different scenarios. If I'm going to block somebody, there's a reason why I'm doing it. It's either A, to keep them away from hitting my jammer and 
clearing a path for my jammer if I'm blocking, um, or as a blocker, it's my my goal is to kill the jammer basically. So it, it just it just depends on the situation. Our capacity is a thousand, and we've been selling out for the past few bouts. You know, it's definitely family friendly. We have a lot of families that come, bring their kids. It's, it's a lot of fun. I think they want to see girls flying in the audience, which happens. And I think the fans are definitely, you know, really into seeing what's going to happen. But the skaters are wanting to play in the championship. Tonight begins the quest for this. Definitely a lifestyle. Uh, we practice. You can practice up to four times a week. Fast skating, some probably some big hits, um, and hopefully the Rebel Skate Alliance winning. We, we are the Art Tribal Roller Girls, and you're watching Spot TV. All right, we're at White Birch Park in Hazelwood. You know, we get to meet a lot of people on Spot TV, but some of our favorites are the Goodwill Warriors. And yeah, they're warriors. Today, they're braving the elements in six inches of snow, and it all benefits the St. Louis area food bank. Well, the Ice Bowl is a charity event that started 25 years ago in Columbia. Just a bunch of guys wanted to do something for charity, so they got together, got some canned goods, and played in, in the winter. Our charity has been the St. Louis Food Bank. This year, we're going to go over 1,000 pounds of food for the five events that we've had, which is our record. Along with that, we give them a monetary donation, too. You'll see people have golf bags, just like you have a, a, a ball golf bag. A lot of the terminology is the same as regular golf. You, uh, you know, birdie, bogey. What you do is you usually start from a designator area, a tee pad. You get a disc. There's different kinds of discs. Uh, the, usually, the lighter the disc is the understable. You can throw it straighter and understable to the right. So there's drivers. There's putters. There's mid-range. There's all different shapes of the disc to help it fly differently. People will throw five, six, seven hundred feet. You know, it gives you a reason to come out in the bad weather no matter what. The slogan for the ice bowl is no wimps, no whiners, so you have to go. No matter what the weather is, you come out and play, and it all goes to charity. I love it. That's, that's what gives me satisfaction. Number one. Number one. For those of you who watch a lot of TV, you've probably heard of the show Man Vs. Food, where host Adam Richmond takes food challenges all over the country. Well, Adam, eat your heart out. We found a 16-pound pile of dough and toppings here in Lebanon, Illinois, and the pizza's called the Big Mama. Welcome to Mama Gusto's. My name is Al Carfano. I'm the owner of Mama Gusto's Pizzeria. I'm originally from Virginia Beach, Virginia. I tell people I ran out of gas in Fairview and never left, but my sister lived here and coerced me into moving here about 13 years ago, so I did. I would say it's warm and inviting, it's fun, uh, yeah, it smells great, and uh, you know, it, it's, that, uh, it's that pizza parlor everybody wished they had back in their hometown. Mama Gusto's is a combination of great pizza, great food, huge portions. You know, I love it when people take stuff home. Yeah, Mama Gusto's is the, I think it's the, the best pizza on this side of Europe. The Big Mama is our version of everything times everything times everything. Well, you know, we, we like, we say it weighs 16 pounds. That's the least it's gonna weigh. 17 years I've been making this pizza. I had one group of eight guys do it. One, eight big guys. They're the only people that have finished. <laughs> it's a 40 ounce dough ball, 16 inches round. Prep time takes about 15 minutes. It gets about 14 ounces of sauce. And this is homemade? Absolutely. And we bring it over here. My son usually starts them out. What he does, he fills buckets with different toppings. We have sausage, onion, green peppers, black olives, green olives, and banana peppers. About a pound of each of them in there. So we do two seven pound buckets. Because what I do is when I'm doing the buckets that I just take it and you do the old quick flip. Remember, this is only seven pounds. So this right here, this is actually gonna make this about 19 pounds. There we go. And then I just take and mold it into shape. Now I'm gonna put cheese and dough on top of this. It's rough about three pounds of cheese. Whatever flat meats we didn't put on the bottom, we put on top with Canadian bacon. 
Now I take these strips, I lay them across the top and I just tuck them right under the cheese here. This is how I keep it all together. And then they slide her in and they get her going. I think this one we made tonight, I think it's gonna be up around the 19 pound range. Now that's the big mama. I think folks in St. Louis need to get down here a little more and try this pizza. It's a, it's a huge difference. You don't know what you're missing. Okay, here's the deal. Before I dig into this piece, did you know there's actually no man versus food type challenge for it? For a 16 pound pizza. And Big Al is actually open to suggestions. So here's what we want you to do. Go to our website, spottvstl.com. Find the video of this pizza on the website. Under it is a comment section. We want you to post your challenge. And if Big Al likes it, he could name this challenge after you. Hey, it's Paul Cook in the Central West End. Weather really starting to warm up. Well, that means you might need to update your fashions a little bit. Two things you gotta know there, what to get and where to go. I probably can't help you with the what to get, but I do know where, right here at Morris Fashion. The whole idea is we wanted to open something that was uh, a little more contemporary, not very St. Louis, if you will. And so we, we were trying to come up with a place that, you know, was very laid back, wasn't uh, pretentious and just very warm and inviting uh, and just kind of a cool place to hang out, you know. We try to follow the latest trends um, that you would see in GQ and details and uh, all the major publications and just try to have fresh new products and, and keep things new. We're mainly focused on just kind of a casual laid back lifestyle, things you could wear to work, you could wear out later that evening, um, you can dress it up, dress it down, it's very versatile uh, for your wardrobe. We do uh, custom shirts. Dress shirts, sports shirts. We also make custom suits. Uh, we do everything from some fine English fabrics all the way up to Xenia suits. And all of our custom clothing is made here in the USA. All the neckties we buy, we actually only buy one of each tie. Um, that way you don't run into somebody with the, the exact same tie on in town. We do a lot of different hats from fedoras to newsboys. Leather cuffs have been really popular lately. We've uh, got some of those. We've got some great watches from Ted Baker. Uh, we even have some cufflinks that are made out of game used uh, Cardinal baseballs. The ones that we have right now are from the 2005 NLDS game against the Padres that we won. We just opened the women's side last May. What we do is we offer you a similar clothing to the men's store. It's kind of that casual, you can wear it to work, you can wear it out, it's ha have fun. It's fun, it's flirty, uh, it's a little sexy at the same time. We carry a lot of name brands that other local boutiques don't carry, um, and the only place you can find them are the department stores. It's been going pretty well so far. The point is just to have fun, that's pretty much it. I'm Kurt Warner and you're watching Spot TV. Spot TV's Frank from Dr. Jim Vegas, baby. From his energetic personality to his wild style and unmistakable look, Frankie Muriel has personified himself as social royalty in St. Louis. For a decade and a half, he and his band Dr. Chevegas have been selling out venues all over the country. So what makes this guy tick? And how does he keep doing it year in and year out? We sat down at his home in Dogtown to get some answers to some of these burning questions. So 1995, you got four members of the band, you guys decide to start Dr. Chevegas. Here we are 16 years later. It's crazy, man. Did you guys envision this happening? No, I mean, you know, Chevegas started out of frustration in our other bands. We thought, we'll just get together, have some fun, play some jams that, you know, nobody cares, it's, it'll just be a good time. And then it just turned into this thing and it blew up immediately. I've always wondered, what is Dr. Chevegas? I've heard you're a cover band, a faux heavy metal band. <laughs> And my favorite one was the Spinal Tap of Disco. There you go. That's so how would one. you describe what Dr. Chebeck is in? You know, it's, I don't know, who knows what it is now. It, it is something different to everybody, and I think that's why it works, you know. 
Um, we're a rock band, but we play dance music, so that's confusing there. We, you know, we, we're just a, a live, living, breathing jukebox. But, but I think because of our experience playing concerts and playing arenas and playing theaters and playing these big rooms, that we bring that energy to a club and people weren't and still aren't used to that. But we kind of just drive it home, you know? It's just, I mean, it's nonstop, booty shaking, four on the floor, bang, 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 go. And uh, it just brings the house down every night. Now the name. Very cool name, but everybody wondered where it came yeah, from. Yeah, you know, it was one of those, one of the guys in the band, he was just kind of riffing on uh, the movie Dr. Zhivago, and, and he was always just making kind of funny things. And uh, he just made a joke one day, and we just all thought it was hilarious. Now, you know, we didn't think we'd be doing it more than a couple of months, man. And it's like, you know, bands don't stay together four or five years before a good run. And this one's going into, you know, 15, 16, it's crazy. Now this is the only job you've ever worked, correct? Correct, yeah. Just, I've always wanted to play music. I've been playing in clubs since I was 16. Um, and I've been around the world doing this stuff, man. And it's, there's nothing like it. She went to Hazelwood West? Hazelwood West, yep. Wildcats, man. Now were you in music there? Did you do theater? Yeah, oh yeah, I was, but I was like in music all day, man. I was one of those guys, I was like in stage band, jazz band, you know, choir, played the, you know, whatever they needed something, I was there, you know? And my teachers were really cool because I played in clubs at night. I was playing guys in the, you know, mid-twenties. I'm 16 and the bass player is with me now. We've been playing together since we were nine, man. So Cub has been with me that whole time. So it was good, it was good. It developed, you know, got to develop our abilities and our skills. Well, I rarely see you without sunglasses on. How many pairs do you have? Uh, I have about 150, 200, they, they rotate, but I always keep the same, I always, I, when I like something, I buy three of everything. <laughs> so I always, because they go out of style or they stop making them or the very thing you love, you wear out. Um, so I always wear the same one. You got this uh, long rock star hair that I think probably women are even jealous of. Now, when I I'm first saw up, you, you know? when I first saw you, it was straight. <laughs> Now it's curly. What, what, how do you, you know, judge what it, to do? It's always been kind of wavy, and it was, uh, you know, all that process. There's there was years in the '90s where you had to flat iron that stuff, you know. And, you know, you just. So you have a go, flat iron. You know. Oh yeah, you know, you go. It takes forever, but you do it. You and know. then, do you have a man bag you carry around? Many. I was in Vegas. I was cracking up because they did a feature on what's in your bag, and it was usually for you know, female entertainers and stuff. So they stuck me in there. Yeah, I got a, I got a weakness for man bags, I guess. Now, Dr. Vegas has kind of slowly evolved. You guys now are actually doing some of your own stuff a little bit. You produce down here in the basement. Yep, yep. We're so, um, getting what ready to having... release some stuff this year. We're still working on it. We're about five songs in a new album. Just finished uh, one of the second ones this week. Uh, we're sneaking them into the set a little bit, and uh, we're getting some good response. So. Walk me through a little bit of the prep that you go through when you when you go to the venue, what you do backstage before you get out there, because as you talked about, it's a, it's a high-energy performance. The coolest thing is when you get there at 8 o'clock and there's a line out the door already, you know, um, you know, an hour and a half before we even go on, the place is full, and that that makes you feel good. And you, you, you know, you owe it to those people to, no matter what you got going on, to just bring it and just to give it to them. You know? I'm still stuck on this 19-pound pizza, and it's all right here in my stomach. Yes, it is. Are you gonna bring me some next time? I will next time. All right. As for you, go to our website, SpotTVSTL.com. Make a comment on that Mama Gusto's video, maybe the Moto Europa video. We're giving away all kinds of prizes and restaurant gift certificates, so you want to stay tuned for that. And fan us on Facebook. We love Facebook, and we want our fans on there to see what we're doing every day. So thank you for watching Spot TV. We're gonna get out of the rain. We'll see you next time. <laughs>